When running an RBG, being on the same page with your team in terms of your vocabulary, what you call things, is key for good communication between your strat caller, your target caller, and everybody else. If you're just getting into RBGs and PvP, and you're coming from perhaps a noob <laughs> background, or maybe you've mostly done PvE, today I'm going to go through some basic terms that you probably want to know before you get into RBGs, so that you don't get caught being the dumb person in the group <laughs> having to ask the stupid question. Uh, this uh, video should also be useful if you're a veteran and you're running your own groups or introducing uh, new players to PvP, you can send a link to this video along to them and avoid a lot of explanation of the basics when you're trying to put together a group and everybody else is waiting. First, I'm going to go through a few roles in RBGs that you should know about. First, we've got a target caller, or abbreviated as TC. Sometimes this is also called a shot caller, depends on whoever's running your group. Um, but I've never seen it abbreviated as SC either. This is the person in the group, generally in team fights, who is going to be calling targets for everybody else to get on. You want to make sure that you are able to hear that person, make sure that their volume is good in whatever voice chat you're using, if you're using voice chat. Pay attention to this person. They are uh, working hand in hand, or sometimes they are the same person as the strat caller. The strat caller is somebody who is more or less at a macro level running the RBG, running the group. They're calling strat, they're telling the team uh, what they're going to do, what kind of play they're going to make. They're like a coach, in a sense. The flag carrier, or FC, shows up particularly in flag maps, capture the flag maps like Warsong Gulch, uh, sometimes you'll see them in Deepwind Gorge, and uh, Twin Peaks. These people are generally more tanky or depending on the game, the state of the game, sometimes they've been um, just fast <laughs> players. They can just move and, and are hard to capture. Uh, these people are reserved for capturing the flag. They are most likely going to be running a slightly different type of game than the rest of the group. The EFC, or enemy flag carrier, is a term that you want to know because oftentimes a target caller will call out for everybody to get on the EFC to target them at a moment's notice to burst on that person. And they won't call, it'll be different from the rest of the targets. Rather than calling out the class or the name of the person, they'll just say, kill the EFC. And so you should know who that person is. It's the enemy player carrying the flag in that map. Lastly, you should know about base sitters. Base sitters show up in nodes maps like Arathi Basin, uh, Battlefield Gilneas, uh, Deepwind Gorge as well. Anywhere where there are bases to sit and watch, those people generally uh, tend to have pets or stealth and their job is to basically ensure that nobody comes along and captures that base once we've got it. Uh, they need to be vocal, they need to make sure that their mics work as well and that everybody can hear them. And I've done entire videos on base sitting, uh, one of which I'll link above. Next I want to go through a list of commands. These are things that the target caller might call out or the strat caller might call out and you need to know what they mean because if you don't follow them, then you're gonna have a really frustrated target caller or a really frustrated strat caller. And these are just the basic ones. Uh, the more a strat caller or target caller runs uh, RBGs, the more they are uh, getting, the more experience they have, they will probably come up with additional ones. And everybody kind of does things a little bit different. Uh, these ones are some of the commands that are pretty common and that you do want to understand fairly well. First, uh, generally whenever I'm calling as a strat caller for somebody to go to a base, I'll use the term push. Uh, that means, you know, you're going to push up into that base, try and capture it. Maybe you're just there as a distraction. Maybe you're there to capture it, but push generally means go there. Um, 
crowd control or CC. This is something that you should do regardless, but a lot of PvEers and a lot of new players to the game don't quite understand how vital the role of CC or crowd control is in a game. Know what this means when somebody says for you to CC a particular uh, target, make sure that you do it or, or try to and if somebody says you're not putting out enough CC understand that that means that you're probably doing your general DPS rotation a little much and you need to uh, change it up a little bit throw in some fears some stuns some um, whatever you've got in your kit and I won't list them all uh, the next term is spin when uh, somebody says spin a flag that means that we own the flag, or maybe we don't own the flag, but uh, whoever on the other team is trying to capture it, you need to interrupt that by hitting them with something. Um, spinning is a vital part also in uh, a nodes map or any kind of map with a flag, even um, like the flag in the middle of EOTS, Eye of the Storm. That often we need somebody to spin uh, while we hold a team fight. And so if you are designated as the person to spin, or if somebody just says there's not enough flag spinning, we need to spin the flag, that means watch that flag and whoever on the enemy team is trying to capture it, go hit them with something. Don't have to hit them repeatedly, just enough that they stop uh, their cast on that flag. Another uh, term is to float. This one. Oddly enough, a lot of people don't understand it when I <laughs> when I ask them to float between two bases. That does not mean uh, sit at a base or, may, or fight on the roads. Um, as a strat caller, when I ask the team to float, more often than not, it is in a Rathi Basin or uh, any kind of nodes map, uh, Gilneas. I'll, I'll say float between and then I'll name two bases and that means keep yourself available don't go and engage with the enemy don't start a fight on the roads this means to float and basically be ready to go and have a fight at one of those two bases but sitting in the middle so that you're kind of equidistant between the two bases you're not gonna have a long run to get to them and this is vital for any kind of maintenance strat in a nodes map you want to know what that command means Lastly, a couple of target caller commands. Uh, I, you know, generally, uh, everyone understands what the target caller means when they say target so and so or target a particular class. But when they say swap or hard swap, a lot of people aren't quite sure what the difference is between those. When a target caller calls for a swap, they're saying, "Okay, get off the old target that I called and get on the new one." When they call for a hard swap, if they do it well, if they do it right, they're not calling for a hard swap every time. But a hard swap is basically saying, we're going to go onto this next target and pop a lot of burst right off the bat. And hard swaps are supposed to be used um, strategically for getting particular kills. You know, maybe you started on one target and got him down to the point where healers popped a bunch of cooldowns and then you called a swap, just a normal swap, onto another target while those cooldowns ticked away. And probably that uh, original target got some heals out of that, but then the target caller might call a hard swap back to the original target because he knows that a lot of the cooldowns, a lot of that target's defensives are already gone. They've expired and so, or at least for the next few seconds. And so he wants you to pop that burst right then. A normal swap doesn't mean pop all your burst. It just means go on a different target and pull out, apply some pressure there for a while. A few more terms that I just wanted to throw together in a sort of misc tab, uh, the Zerker or Zerk is a buff on the map that um, you don't have in a lot of raids. It, it effectively boosts the uh, player's damage, but also makes them take a lot more damage. If somebody picks up a Zerker, they're often a good target to target because of that uh, damage increase on them, and also to mitigate how much trouble they cause with their increased output on damage. The uh, Zerg strat is something that, as a strat caller, 
I'll sometimes call a Zerg strat, often in like a, a mines scenario, or you can do it really in any kind of um, BG, but the Zerg strat is sort of this abstract concept where whatever strat I'm calling, it's keeping the entire team or the bulk of the team all together. Nine, maybe 10 man, all in one spot. We're going to maximize that team fight, have everybody available. CR and MMR, or current rating and matchmaking rating, are terms that and acronyms that you're going to see front and center in Pugfinder. And also on the scoreboards of your uh, games. The current rating is what Blizzard has given you as your current rating, and it will go up and down depending on how you win games. The matchmaking rating is in the bottom right hand corner of uh, your team's scoreboard uh, during a BG, and that matchmaking rating will go up even more drastically depending on how much you've won or lost. Your current rating may be 1500 but maybe you've won several games in a row that will boost your matchmaking rating up to uh, 2200 rating. Uh, that matchmaking rating will determine what types of teams or what skill level of teams you are going to be matched up against. Oftentimes, a uh, group leader will say, I'm trying to find this particular class, this particular... Uh, spec of player and maybe you fit that role but they still won't take you because you don't have the CR or the MMR and that is just them being picky about those ratings and also being very concerned about their ability to push rating if you're carrying a lot of low lit rating people there the game doesn't give you as much of a rating increase when you uh, do win and uh, also, when you lose, it penalizes you even further. So it behooves them, if they are pushing rating, to be picky about rating, even if you are the right class and the right spec that they're looking for. Some more terms that you're going to see front and center in Pug Finder, uh, or Group Finder, whichever way, whichever end of the finder you're on are uh, the type of voice chat programs that teams are using. Now, voice chat is something that's used very prominently in PvP. Uh, as I've got, If you watch any of my other videos, you'll see uh, that I, I harp on this a lot. The communication is key for winning a lot of games. Um, understanding what type of expectations there are for a team uh, in terms of entry criteria uh, with regards to voice chat is important because if you get into the group and you say uh, I don't know what curse or vent or discord are and they're requiring it you're just gonna look inexperienced and it's frustrating to be honest as a group leader I find somebody that meets all the other criteria they're the right class the right spec they've got the right eye level and other stuff and then they get in the group and I say, okay, here's the link for curse. And then they say, well, I don't know what that is. And they confuse it with the curse client for add-ons. Or they say, well, I don't want to get into a voice chat or I don't have a mic or something like that. Oftentimes, I'll just boot the person because I don't have the patience to deal with that kind of inexperience. Um, so understand what these are. Uh, I, it would behoove you, if you're going to PvP a lot and run with a lot of different groups, it would behoove you to have all of these installed and up to date. They're not um, that big of a pain. A lot of people make a big fuss about it. Uh, having these set up and understanding the basics of how to get into somebody's uh, curse call or Discord server or vent server will take you a long way towards just making friends and networking and getting into a lot of groups. So that was my quick run through on basic terminology for getting into RBGs in World of Warcraft. Uh, sorry, my voice is sounding kind of off today. My allergies are killing me. Uh, if you think that I've missed any uh, particularly useful terms to know, uh, let me know in the comments below and I, I might do a follow up video or addendum to this one. Uh, if you are running with people who are new to PvP, or trying it out for the first time, or maybe they're new to the game entirely, feel free to share this video with them. I've got a lot more videos 
in the works. Um, some more on target calling, some more on just sort of getting into PvP introductory stuff. Uh, useful for people who are guild leaders, RBG leaders, strat callers, t target callers, etc. I want to give you guys the ammo you need to be able to solve all of the inexperienced players' problems uh, without having to go through and come up with the lessons yourselves. So uh, feel free to like and subscribe, and I'll be back again next week with another video.